The world is in a pretty bad state right now. Sea levels are rising, temperatures are warming, global powers are trying to dominate through technology and trade disputes and tariffs are pulling the world apart rather than bringing it together. Now all of this is going on in the middle of a global pandemic. Institutions like the United Nations have helped stabilize the world for decades, but they seem to be no match for today's problems. They're struggling to take meaningful worldwide action on climate change, racial injustice and inequality. And now they're stumbling on a coordinated response to COVID-19. But there is hope. Multilateral organizations like the UN, NATO, the IMF, the World Bank were all born from a global catastrophe, the Second World War. So in the 1940s, world leaders came together to create political, economic and military systems that would maintain peace and a balance of power and of course, rebuild war-torn Europe. It's just that now, these institutions are, well, pretty old and the world looks very different today. Plus, these institutions were created by and for the richest and most powerful nations in the late 1940s. They called all the shots, and let's be honest, they mostly still do. Some of today's most outspoken activists are starting to hold that power to account and demand action. People are dying. Entire ecosystems are collapsing. We are in the beginning of a mass extinction and all you can talk about is money and fairy tales of eternal economic growth. How dare you? Can these global organizations change or is it time for them to retire? Let's go back about 75 years. World War II, in which 60 million people had been killed worldwide, had just ended. A previously established international organization called the League of Nations had just been dissolved and many countries were looking for ways to prevent another world war. 51 nations came together in the spirit of multilateralism, which is when countries form alliances to pursue common goals. They signed a charter creating the United Nations, a body that would promote peace, global security and human rights. Five countries, the winners of World War II, would have a bigger say by getting permanent seats and veto power on the Security Council. Around the same time, the US and Britain led a meeting of delegates from 44 countries at a place called Bretton Woods in the US. They wanted to stabilize global exchange rates and reduce the hyperinflation that had come from printing money to pay for war costs. They decided all currencies would be pegged to the US dollar, again revealing the power dynamics at the heart of these global institutions. The same group formed two organizations that still exist today. The International Monetary Fund, which seeks to promote global financial cooperation, and the World Bank, which loans money to indebted countries and funds economic development. But the peace did not last long. Just a few years later, a sharp divide split Europe between East and West, communism and capitalism. The Soviet Union had emerged from the war as a major communist superpower. In response, prominent capitalist countries in North America and Western Europe decided to start a new organization to defend themselves and once again consolidate power. In 1949, they created the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, or NATO. These global institutions have had some major wins over the years. The UN played a leading role in the Treaty on Nuclear Non-Proliferation, which is still in effect today. The World Health Organization eradicated smallpox, and in 2018 alone, the World Bank committed nearly $962 million to job programs seeking to reduce poverty around the globe. But there's been some massive failures as well. These global alliances didn't prevent genocide in Rwanda in 1994 or in South Sudan in 2010. UN peacekeepers and programs have faced accusations of sexual abuse in the Congo, corruption in Iraq and spreading cholera in Haiti. Though 193 countries are part of the UN, three of the countries with the most power, the US, China and Russia, are increasingly focused on their own interests and rarely align. Disagreements amongst them have led to the UN failing to take collective action on the destruction and displacement of the Rohingya Muslims in Myanmar, or resolving the bloody conflict in Syria. 
And now these global institutions are failing to come together to address the coronavirus pandemic. Member states like the US and China are locked in a blame game, as well as a trade war. And many other countries are turning inward, some even hoarding supplies and setting unilateral travel restrictions. All this doesn't exactly scream global cooperation. So where do we go from here? In parts of the West, a growing nationalist movement has brought a wave of authoritarian leaders to power. It's led the UK to separate from the European Union and the US to pull out of alliances like the Paris Agreement on Climate Change and the Iran nuclear deal, which it had itself negotiated. From this day forward, it's going to be only America first. America first. And five non-Western countries that represent nearly half the world's population are leveraging their own economic power Known by the acronym BRICS, the countries have formed their own bank to rival the IMF and World Bank. Here's the thing. The UN and other multilateral organizations have always relied on the leadership and economic commitment of the largest world powers. These institutions are only as strong as their members. And it really comes down to their will and the sense of responsibility. Major superpowers don't necessarily need multilateralism in the same way that smaller countries do. They have the might to act alone. But that doesn't mean there aren't advantages, even to the richest of the nations. The World Health Organization, for instance, collects and shares vital information from countries around the world. If the US withdraws in 2021, as President Trump has indicated, it could lose a lot of sway over global health initiatives, including ones that could help distribute vaccines and drugs to fight COVID-19. And we're still a connected world with common problems to solve, no matter how many borders are closed or how many walls are built. From the hashtag MeToo movement to Fridays for Future to Black Lives Matter, activists across the globe are taking to the streets and demanding real change. Could these movements lead to new ways of organizing and wielding power? Can they hold our stodgy global institutions to account or even maybe replace them? There's no doubt that multilateral organizations have been a necessary tool in keeping the world stable for the last 75 years, but times are changing and they will need to as well. UN Secretary General Antonio Gutierrez recognized this. The nations that came out on top more than seven decades ago have refused to contemplate the reforms needed to change power relations in international institutions. Inequality starts at the top, in global institutions. Addressing inequality must start by reforming them. So, are there enough good bones to preserve and reform these institutions, or is now the moment to build something new?